So now, how many of y'all can say and agree that God has already done some great things for you? Amen. 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 So now, if he doesn't do anything else, he's already done some great stuff. Amen. And so for that, I need to be thankful. Amen. I need to be thankful for what you've already done. You know, it's, it's, there's nothing like a child when you bless them and bless them and bless them, and they're still asking you about something else. You know, most people, most people, uh, let's just say, for example, if someone was getting an apartment, and let's just say we came along and said, okay, here's what we're going to do for you. We're going to pay your first year's rent for you. So you all like, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so I can thank you. Yeah, but, but if that was if that was said, you, you're just now getting this apartment, and someone comes to you and say, we're gonna pay your first year's rent for you, Sister Tiffany. We're gonna pay it for you, your first year. Most people when they hear that elder, they're gonna shout at me, praise God, praise right Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that back in the day. <laughs> they, won't, they, won't, they won't be excited and just praise God for that. They'll hear that and they'll say, okay, that's good. Watch this. But what about next year? <laughs> just me. What about next year? You ought to be thankful for this year. Be excited that for 12 months, you don't have to worry about paying on an apartment. So now, you should be able to get yourself together in 12 months and put some money aside. That way, when that year is up, you're good to go. But most people don't think like that. They're like, okay, that's good for the first year. Okay, you're going to pay my first year? Okay, that's cool. What about next year? <laughs> this is what we're talking about. Be thankful for what God already done. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to Psalms 126. Come on, real quickly. Psalms 126. Hallelujah. Psalms 126. Psalms 126. Man, if someone said that, man, I'm shocked. Yeah. Man, I'm shocked. Man, boy, I'm shocked. Well, you know, we're going we're gonna to pay your car note off. Okay, but well, what about when I get ready to buy my next car? Well, you on your own. <laughs> Come on, Sister Brisbane, you on your own. We take care of this one for you. You on your own with the next one. Hallelujah. Psalms 126, shout amen when you're there. Amen. Look at verse 1. Look at verse 1 and 3. It says, a song of degrees. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, now whenever you read in the Bible, Zion, that's a type of the church, okay? It's a type of the church. We were like them that dreamed. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, I love this elder law, the Lord hath done. Hath. That's past tense. The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Yes. So he's already done some great things. And he just wants us to say thank you Amen. for the things that he's already done. Amen. 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 Things that he's already done. And again, just take an inventory of your own personal life in 2013. Again, sure things did not always work out right, didn't always go the way that you planned, you know, but look what God is doing. We're talking like that now with our with our beautiful daughter-in-law. We don't really call her daughter-in-law, I just say that to make a point. We actually call her daughter because she's married to my son. And she's a part of the family. And you know, and, and her and Elijah, their vision was to give natural birth. But it didn't turn out that way. It didn't turn out that way. She, she had to have a C-section. And, and the baby is here. She's beautiful. She's gorgeous. And yet our daughter is, is still kind of struggling with I didn't want to do it that way. I didn't want, I didn't want to do it that way. I wanted to be natural for her. And she was kind of down when the first lady was there. And the first lady was picking her back up, saying, daughter, don't worry about that. She's here. She's beautiful. She's gorgeous. And then Elijah, her husband, was trying to pick her back up. 
And then my son called me up. He was out riding and he called me up. And he said, hey, Dad. I said, what's going on, boy? He said, hey, Dad. He said, you know, I just want y'all to pray for my kid. I said, really? What's, what's happening? He said, she's still kind of down and depressed. I said, about what? She just gave birth. I said, about what? And he said, well, that's it, Dad. You know, she didn't, she didn't want to do it that way. She wanted to have a natural birth, but it was a season. And I said, really? So I had to be sensitive first. I said, I said, really? I said, I didn't know she felt that way. He said, oh, yeah, Dad, she's struggling with that. I said, son, I said, son, the baby is here. Whether by natural or C-section, the baby is here, and your wife is making a phone to come. We need to be grateful and thankful that there was no major complications. We need to be thankful that everything went well, even with the C-section. We need to be grateful that she's recovering, she's doing well, the baby is healthy, the baby is doing well, your wife is doing well. We're not going to sweat the small stuff. We're not going to dwell over, I didn't want it to happen that way, I wanted it to happen this way. Well, let's just be grateful that she's here. See? Be thankful for what the Lord has already done. I do. So don't you must see it says, the Lord, the Lord hath done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. How many of y'all glad? The Lord has done great things. Man, if I was to bring you up here and just let you start testifying, we'd be here till next week. Of all the great things that the Lord has done for you and your family. I'm just using me because I'm up here speaking. But if I pull you out the audience and let you just start sharing about all the wonderful things God has done for you and your family, we'd be here till next week. So God deserves our thanks. He deserves our gratefulness and our gratitude. Amen? Come on, let's give him a hand of praise. He deserves it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The second thing that we ought to be thankful about is present blessings. Present blessings. We ought to be thankful about what the Lord has already done for us when we look back over 2013, but now what God is doing for us right now. What he's doing for us right now. He's doing some great things for us right now. Amen. 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 You, 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 I can say, you, you, you're, you're doing great things, and you're learning, and even when it comes to the Word of God, you're learning, you're growing, your, your faith is being stretched to a good, to a good degree. And God is blessing you, he's increasing you as you're stepping out on faith and trusting him and his word. He's doing some great things for you right now. So you ought to be thankful, not just for what he's already done, but what he's doing right now. The next thing we should be thankful for are the things that God is doing right now in our lives and at this very moment. I love that. Oftentimes we become so focused and consumed on the things that we don't have and we lose sight of what is vitally important, the things that we do have, i.e., a roof over our heads, our health and strength, a wonderful family, a job, <laughs> transportation, and I got to this in, in a good church. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, so you, you have to be thankful, daughter, for not only the past blessings, but the present blessings. What I have right now. I, I, I'm so I'm so thankful. And before I give you this next point, let me just flow with the spirit with this, uh, and, and because I want to give you a definition in a few moments dealing with contentment. But I, I need to say this first. Give, give you a definition about contentment. But most people are content with what they have until they see what someone else has. You was cool with your hoopty. <laughs> You was cool. As long as you was rolling with that hoopty, you was cool. You like, man, this thing get me from point A to B and back to A again. Man, I'm content with this thing. I'm happy with it. This my, this my, it ain't the best, but it's mine. This is my hoopty. This is old faithful. Come on, girl. You know when you start. Hey, come on, girl. <laughs> this is mine. You content with that. You're content with where you live. You're content with what you drive. Until you see somebody else's stuff. Once you see somebody else's stuff, now you're no longer content with what you have. And that will hurt you going into the next year. 
I'm going to show you scripture in a few moments. We're going to have to learn how to be content. Now watch this revelation. Not complacent. Big difference. I'm content, dog. I'm not complacent. I'm content, son. I'm content. So if you got the big house with 10 rooms and I got the three bedroom, four bedroom, I'm cool with that. I'm content with what I have and I don't feel that I need to try to go get what you have to make me feel like I'm doing something or accomplishing something. Because if the truth be told, I don't know what you gotta sacrifice to be in that big 10 bedroom house. I don't know how many meals you gotta miss. I don't know how many car payments you gotta make and all this. I don't know all those things. I just see the material stuff. But if I'm content with where I am at the moment, then I know God can bless me with greater things. And that's what hurts many Christians. They're okay with what they have until they see what someone else has. Okay? And you and I will have to learn how to be thankful for what we have. For what we have. You know, I look at I look at Hollywood and you don't don't follow Hollywood for nothing. That's just entertainment. But I'm gonna use this as an example. I look at Hollywood marriages, for the most part, not all of them, not all of them. But I look at Hollywood marriages and these folks spend thousands of dollars to put on this big hoopla. And they spend thousands of dollars. This wedding costs 70 grand or 100 grand or two million dollars and all this stuff. But praise God, praise God, praise God. I ain't even praise God. <laughs> but my wife and I, now let's, let me tell the truth, we were broke, so we ain't had nothing. <laughs> my wife and I, we got married in the front yard of a family member's home. She wore a wedding dress. I wore a three-piece suit. My dad and my mom was there. Some of her family members was there, just a handful. And we rented the little art thing. <laughs> and we got married. That was 30 years ago. That was 30 years ago. We didn't have now. Again, all things we need, we were broke, yeah, no but all things being equal, we didn't spend a whole lot of stuff to make it lavish. And here we are 30 years later with two children and a beautiful grandkid. And I see Hollywood pumping up stuff for magazines and all these television shows, and they're spending millions and thousands of dollars, and they can't even stay together except 72 days. <laughs> At some point, you will have to really figure out what's really more important. And be content with where you are, thanking God for where you are and what you have at this moment so he can trust you with more, to handle more, and then increase you with more. Because the word of the Lord says, he that is faithful with that which is least can be faithful with more. If you can't take care of the hoopty, why are you praying for a Mercedes? <laughs> or whatever other brand you may like. I just use that. Whatever brand. Why are you praying for that and you can't even take care of the hoopty? No, no. Be, be, be content with where you are. Be content. Don't be complacent, but be content. Man, man I'm in a, a two-bedroom apartment right now. This is not my last stop. This ain't my last stop. I'm a God, I'm believing in you for, for either a three, four bedroom house or, or if it's a three, four bedroom apartment, I'm believing you for the next level, God. But I'm not going to cuss or curse what you've already blessed me with. It may not be much to anybody else, but it's a whole lot to me. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you for my two bedroom apartment. I thank you, Lord, because I don't have half the headaches that some folk that own houses have. Thank you for it, Lord. I thank you. Lord, I, th I thank you for my hoopty. Yeah, I thank you for my hoopty. 
Yeah, it's rusty, and I gotta use tape here and there, and I gotta tie some stuff together here and there. And when I pull up to the light, I see this dude pull up next to me in a brand new whatever. And he looked at me, and I looked at him, and I just let him go, yeah, she bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm not gonna be upset with what he's doing, what she's doing. Lord, I, I thank you for where I'm at. You know, when I went to Germany to pastor uh, our church there in Europe, the church bought me a car. And Ebony, the car that they bought me was real interesting. They bought me a Pujo. And the Pujo is a four door small, or you like that car, you like that car. It was a small, compact car, had four doors on it. It was painted one color, and one door was a rust color. <laughs> So if the whole car was blue, one door was rust. And, and the church, my, well, they bought this for me. On my way over, they bought a car for the pastor. Then I jumped in that car. Don't think for one minute I said, man, y'all couldn't buy me nothing better than this. I was just so grateful that the church wanted to buy me a car. They wanted me to have access and get around before First State McGee came over. She was back in the States closing out our business affairs, and I went over to Europe to get the church in order and get things rolling in. And they blessed us, my brother, with this Pujo. All the cars painted one color and one door sticking out. Just a crazy color. Y'all remember, y'all was with me, y'all remember that car. And just a crazy color. But, but Brian, man, we rolled that bad boy, dog. <laughs> Stick ship in the floor. <laughs> man, we rolled that bad boy. We were so excited, we were so grateful. We thanked the Lord every day for that car. We were like, Lord, we thank you, we thank you. And then, because the Lord saw our faithfulness with what he already did and what he was doing right then, then later on he blessed us to be able to start making our way up to different automobiles. But see, you're not going to get to where you want to go if you're not thanking God for where you are. Thanking him and rejoicing with what he's already done and what he's doing right now in your life. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all feel that? Yes. Me too. Me too. I'm feeling that as well. Praise the Lord. So the present, let's go to Psalms 86. Let me give you this one scripture. Then we're going to move on to this, this last. Let me give you this. Psalms 86. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank him for present blessings. What he's done for you right now. Amen. Right now. Man, I remember when I was traveling as an evangelist. At that particular time, I wasn't able to uh, afford suits or, or anything like that. First of all, they began out of the door. Man, it was a step of faith, man. We believe in God. And, you know, we, we like to say, oh, just you have to pay dues. You know, people look at me now and they think, oh, man, one pastor got a lady, he ain't his daddy. Dressed nice, he's driving nice, he ain't his daddy. Live nice. Look, that stuff didn't just come overnight. Can I get a better amen? Amen. That didn't come overnight. We, we had to pay some dues in this ministry. Trusting and believing God and walking by faith and, and not by sight. Doing without a whole lot of stuff at that time. And, and, and I'll never forget when we were, were pastoring over there in Europe and, and, and we had to do without some things and then we were starting off as evangelists. We did without a whole lot of different things. Just trusting God. But we thank God for what we had. My, my aunt let us stay in her duplex. But the duplex didn't have central air and heat. It had cracks in the windows and cracks in the floors and where critters could come in. And when it was cold at night, we had to put plastic up around the windows. We had to put towels in front of the door. Y'all don't know about that. Y'all don't know about that. We had to put towels. Y'all do? How many y'all know about that? Okay. We had to put towels in front of We had to put towels in, in front of the doors and all that stuff. And, and at that time, brother, I, I wasn't able to buy a suit, man. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't afford a suit. Here I am, a minister of the gospel, and couldn't afford a suit, man. And my wife and I, we would go to the boutique, is what she called it. It's actually called the Goodwill. <laughs> but we'd go to the boutique, and I would go in there, and I'd find me a nice shirt for $2, and maybe a tie for 50 cents, Brenda, and a pair of slacks, maybe for $1.50, or whatever the case may be, a pair of shoes for, for 4 or $5. We'd take it to the cleaners, Stephanie, and put it in the cleaners, after it came out the cleaners, I put that stuff on, on my way to my next meeting. You couldn't tell me I wasn't clean as a tap. <laughs> you couldn't tell me I wasn't clean. Man, I was clean, man. And no one knew that I was up there preaching about faith 
wearing clothes that came from Goodwill. And neither did I curse my provisions at that time. So God, just thank you that I'm able to at least go in there and buy some. And then I made this prayer, and I said, Lord, one day, you're going to bless me to be able to buy whatever type of suit I want to buy, the jacket and the pants to match. At this time, I had stuff mismatching. And I said, one day I'm going to be able to walk into a store and just buy anything off the rack, whatever I want. Well, that day has come. That day has come. But, but it wasn't always here. It, it, it wasn't always here. I had to thank God for what he had already done. And if you fail to miss that, you're never going to get to where God wants you to be. 